It deceived me and it slew me. The commandment which is holy, which is righteous, which was ordained to life, Paul said, I found it to be death to me. Why? Because what the law could not do in that it was weak. Where? In the flesh. Impossible to live the law in the flesh. Impossible. Because the more you try to do it in the flesh, the more that it will deceive you and slay you. You can't fast enough. You can't pray enough to save yourself. But the law is holy and the commandments holy and just and good. Yes. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid. But it brought forth sin. But sin that it might appear sin. Why? Because until there's a law out there, I don't know what's good and what's not. I don't know good from evil. But whenever God puts a law, it's like your kid. Your child, you say, now, they go out and play in the street, but you've never said a word. They go out and play in the street, and your car almost hits them. You bring them in, and you grab your belt, and you whip them. Oh, well, I forgot. You can't do that anymore. You tell them to go stand in the corner. <laughs> and have time out. But if I tell my kid, my child, do not, here's the law, do not go into the street. It's for my good. It's for their good. Because if you go in the street, you're going to get run over by a car. So I lay out the law. Do not go into the street or play in the street. Because if you do, I'm going to whip you. The kid knows he's going to get a whipping. I'm not telling him because a car's going to run over you and kill you. Because then he'll be thinking, oh, my God, I'm going to get killed. Just a matter of time. No, I'm going to whip you so you don't get killed. That's what the law. So it up here, so I know that there's some sin around here. I got, oh, you, you know how you manifest the sin in a church? Preach the law. And you bring that law, it's going to let sin up here. It's easily simple. Hallelujah. Well, Paul said that sin might appear exceedingly sinful. That it might appear sin. Why? I know the law. Now sin. Now how am I going to do with the sin? That might sin working death in me. Did you get that? Sin works death. Death reigns by sin. Working death in me by that which is good. The law's good, the law's holy. But sin, it ain't the law doing it. It's that we can't keep the law and the flesh is weak. The law is good, holy, and right. But, but it works death in me because sin appears by the commandment. By the commandment. And it works that death in me by the commandment, which is good. Only God is good. This is holy attributes. That God does not lie. Neither does his children lie. He doesn't bear false witness. Neither does his children bear false witness. All the things that God does in his majesty, in his attributes, are all good. Only God is good. The law is good. But it works sin in me because death will reign by sin through that commandment. I can't keep it because of flesh. There's a law of that flesh. Now watch this here. That Sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. In other words, and the more I try to do this, 
And the more I try to work it, the more I exalt flesh, and it becomes exceedingly sin. Exceeding sin. Exceeds. The more I try to do, the less. The less contentment I have, the less peace I have. Churches walking around saying, well, I don't smoke, I don't drink, and I don't do drugs, but you're still a lobster. Ain't nothing changed. You got to have a trans, a transfiguration. You have to have a life put in there, a God life that breaks through all of that. A light that expels the darkness. You have to turn a light switch on to expel the darkness. Which is greater, dark or light? The light. Darkest room in the world, turn a light on. No matter how, be a 20-watt bulb. It's going to dispel the darkness. God is light. In him, there's no darkness at all. The thing is, how do you get in him? That's what Paul's saying here. 99% of the churches want to do it by law. What they're saying, the foot, let's say you had a dress. This is what we do. This is what you don't do. And this is where you go. And this is where you can't go. Oh, really? You can't go to a carnival or a circus because if you go to a carnival or circus, you're going to wind up going to hell. Really? Well, you sit there and make passes at my wife all day long because you're so holy, yet you got to look at my wife and try to get her to run off with you. That you're so holy. I find that the, exalt, the flesh gets so exalted that even though you try to force that flesh, it flares up and it slays you. Did you hear what Paul said? It slays you. You want to live by your little so-called law? It will slay you. You don't know how to walk in the spirit. It's not, well, I, I have to force the law and I have to knock it back. No, Paul said, the more I do it, the more the death rises and slays me. What I do? I walk in the spirit and I will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Why? Because I'm over here. I can't be two places at once. It's simple, but we have to have the pastor. What does the pastor say? Well, he's the one that sets the boundaries for the holding the standard in our church. Oh, yeah? He's the one that sets it. Right. He's the pastor. What pastor says. Get mad. Now, I'm talking to the TV audience. Get mad. I don't care. Somebody said, yeah, you... You got there, no hole in the stand and let your wife. I'll tell you what, I'll take my wife above 10 or 100 of what you. I've seen the life she's lived, and I've seen what yours does. I'll take mine. I can't tell you the things that's happened in churches. And I'm ugly. I'd hate to see what a good looking man would do. Let's go on. <laughs> Is the law natural or spiritual? Paul said it's natural. No, it's spiritual. But what's carnal then? Here's where carnality and 90% of all so-called denominal churches live in carnality. Now watch this. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. How are you sold under sin? Because death reigns in your members. Why? Because you are under Adam, and in Adam all die. Death reigns by sin, which takes occasion by the commandment, which is the law of sin and of death, a ministration of death. I have to have somebody to fulfill the law and get in him. Watch this. For that, now watch this verse 15. For that which I do, I allow not. And what I would, that do I not. For what I hate, that do I. In other words, I don't want to do it, but I find myself doing it. And the more I try not to do it, the worse it comes. 
You cannot, you cannot have contentment through the works of the flesh. What he wants to do, he can't do. What he doesn't want to do, that's what he does. Why? Because he's trying to do it in the flesh. Is that so hard to see? For then I do that. What if then I do, watch it verse 60. For then if then I do that which I would not. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. But I do that which I would not do. If I do, if I do that which I would not do, I consent. I still say the law is good. I'm the one that's got the problem. Well, at least he knows who the problem is. That's more than I can say for most of us. Now then, it is no more I that do it. Whoa, wait a minute. Are you telling me the devil made you do it? No. Watch it now. What's making you do it then? What is constraining you to do this? Why, when you do that and you're trying to do what good and you don't do it and you don't want to do that and that's what you do, I still consent to the law that it's holy. It's not the law's fault. It's good. It's holy. Well, then what's doing it? Paul said, now then there's no more that I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. There's a law of sin then. Sin is doing it. Not the devil. Sin. Sin that dwelleth in me. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Why? For to will is present with me. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. I'm trying to find out something that I can overcome this, this, this thing with. Death is reigning. Sin. I don't want to do it, now I do. And it's, this, this sin is dwelling in me. This inherent nature that I've got of the Adamic nature, it's just my nature. That's like the old scorpion said to the frog, Take me over to the other side of, of the lake. Because I can't swim and you can. Let me hop on your back and take me to the other side. Frog said, no. Because if I do that, you will strike me. And then we'll die. The scorpion said, no, that don't make no sense. Because... If I did that, we're both going to die. Frog says, that makes sense. You don't make sense. You do not lean to your own understanding. Two plus two does not equal four in the spiritual realm. They say one plus one plus one equals three. No, in the spiritual realm, one plus one plus one equals one. Well, the frog thinks about it and says, that makes sense. He leans to his own carnal knowledge. Because if you strike me, we're both going to die, and you're going to die too. So that makes sense. You won't do it. Hop on. Right in the half in the middle of the lake, guess what happens? The scorpion strikes him. The frog said, why did you do that? Now we're both going to die. The scorpion said, I can't help it. It's just my nature. Why didn't Jesus confide in the disciples? Because he knew what was in the heart of man. Somebody says, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. That's the world's thinking, buddy. <laughs> I don't want my enemies closer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can run kingdoms by fear. You can run them by greed, 
both of them are effects of the flesh and both of them will fall. The only kingdom that Jesus, the reason it will never fall is it's built on love. Not fear, not greed. King says that you either obey by law or kill you. Here's a guillotine, I'll cut your head off. You over here, you obey me and I'll make you officers of the land and I'll give you houses and lands and cars. They run it by fear or greed, it's all the flesh. Man's government will never succeed because of that. Make their greatest constitution in the world, it's still going to fail. There's only one government that will never fail, and that's a government of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Constitutions in Matthew 5, 6, and 7, built upon the first Beatitudes, which are the principles of the kingdom, and then, and then the law, which are the statutes and judgments. Outlined in Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Paul said, it's sin that dwelleth in me, but I know it me dwelleth no good thing in the flesh. For what? For to will is present with me, as long as I've got that will. But how to perform that which is good, I find not. And he goes through it again. For the good that I would do, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Now somebody said, this is Paul before he got converted. This is Paul before he got baptized and got the Holy Ghost. Huh? Well, some of you, all you got to do is get baptized, Paul. Get the Holy Ghost and you, you what? That's it. <laughs> no. This is Paul writing to the church at Rome. After he's done been through hell, high water, mud, and flood, in a few years, he's going to go up there and be beheaded on Via Ciencias to the church of Rome. He said, verse 20, now if I do that, that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but the sin that dwelleth in me. I find in a law. Paul's found a law. What law did you find, Paul? I find a law that when I do good, evil is present with me. For I delight, I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Notice you've got two men here. You've got two men. You're not just one little simple creature. The outward man is perishing day by day, but the inward man is renewed. We're not feeding the outward man the, of the flesh. We're feeding, and you're somebody, well, I'm still in the flesh. Yeah, I was crucified with Christ, and nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. What? In the inner man. That's the inward man. Not the outward. The inward. Now, how do you get this victory, Paul? He said, I want you to know. I want you to know. I find the law that when I do good, evil is present with me, for I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Paul is baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. He's got the Holy Ghost, and the inward man is renewed after Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. After the inward man, I serve God. But I see another law in my members. Warring against the law of my mind. My mind. That's the reason that mind has to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. You can't walk around and transform the mind knocking one another in all evil manner of work and concupiscence and uh, every evil imagination and knocking your brother. You cannot do it because then you're falling into the lust of the flesh. You're exhausting your flesh, which blocks the flow of God in the inward man. Well, I've got a right to do it. No, you don't. You feed the flesh, you're going to reap the flesh. Whosoever you yield your members of service to obey, here the service to whom you obey. 
Even though you've got the Holy Ghost, if you don't act like it, if you don't obey and yield to it, then you will die. I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is where? In my members. Hmm. In my members? Oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from the body of this death? Did you see how he said that? Did he say, oh, wretched man that I am? You little watered down, little Mickey Mouse, milk toast Christians. Did you hear how he said that? Is there an exclamation, exclaiming it, exclamation mark after that? Oh, wretched man that I am! Somebody said, well, he's a king of kings, Lord, Lord, you're a child of the living king. Uh, yeah, that's what you are, but you condescend to men of low estate. What does that mean? Paul, when he first got saved, he said, Paul, called to be an apostle, which is the least of them all, but I labored more than they all. Not Yet not I, but Christ that was with me. Then a little later on, he said, I'm the least of all saints. Then right before he chopped his head off, he said, this is a worthy exception, worthy of all exception. This is a true saying, worthy of all exception to accept it. That Christ Jesus came in the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Somebody said, how could Paul say that? He's a child of the king. How could he say? Because he knew that is in my flesh. Dwelleth no good thing. And if there's anybody that bar the marks of the Lord Jesus Christ in his body, it was Paul. His life parallels the Lord's all the way through. How great things he must suffer for the name of Jesus. He that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. What do you do? I, you underline this, verse 25, I thank God, how? Through Jesus Christ our Lord. You get this law, underline this next statement. So then with the mind, I serve the law of God. So here's the mind. The mind, the organ of the mind is the brain, the thought process. But the mind is your self, soul. Your mind, your will, your emotions, your imagination, your intellect. There is where the mind has to be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what is a good, acceptable, and perfect will of God for you is. You can't sit idly by and say, woe well, be unto them at ease in Zion and, 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 be not, and be serving God faintly, half-heartedly, and not being hungered, hunger and thirst after righteousness. He that does do hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. That mind has to be renewed in order for you to be sanctified not just in spirit, but soul and body as well. How's the body dead? Because you've crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust. So the mind, it wants to serve God. But there's a pull. There's still a law. There's still a pull in the members. So with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. What's the law of God? The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. But with the flesh, the law of sin. What's the law of sin? What's the law of sin and death? 
What is the law of sin and death? The law is good, it's holy, but it's what? It's a ministration of death. Why? Because it brings forth sin, that it might appear exceeding sin. So you've got one or two choices. Even after you've received the Holy Ghost, you've got one of two choices. You can either live to the flesh and die, sin unto death, or you can yield them unto holiness, unto righteousness. And the choice is in the mind of the person. If you set your mind on worldly things, well, I got a car, I got a house. I've got money, I've got land, I've got possessions, I've got bank accounts. You're falling into the trap of the flesh. And the more you do that, it will war against the Spirit of God. Or, if you live to the Spirit of God... Then if riches increase, you won't set your heart upon them. It doesn't make any difference. You're already dead. Reckon yourselves dead unto sin. How? Your members. You won't be tempted then. Why? God cannot be tempted, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust. And when lust is conceived, it brings forth sin. And when sin is conceived, it brings forth death. What are you going to do with your mind? Well, I don't like it. I guarantee you in every church you preachers preach in, and I'm talking to the, uh, the, the TV audience out there as well, and the Internet. A preacher that thinks he's going to get behind a pulpit and everybody's going to applaud him because he brings the word of God, you better, you better get real. If they call Jesus Beelzebub, the Lord of the flies, how much more are they going to call you Beelzebub? You have to have a mindset come hell, high water, mud, flood, snow, or whatever, you're going to serve God. Nothing, nothing, no one is going to get in your way to serve the living God. You're going to preach that word as the Lord gives it to you and the revelation he's given to you, and you're going to be faithful to that call. No matter what or who says what. Then, God says, after you've been tested and you've been tried, Jesus started his ministry about the age of 30, immediately baptized with John and Jordan, the Spirit of God, Appears as a dove descending upon him. He it is. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and dab with fire. He goes out. The first thing God does is tempt him in, in his flesh, soul, and spirit. Flesh. He was afterward a hungered. Make these stones bread if I be the son of God. Appeals to his flesh. Soul. Pride. Jump down off the pinnacle and let them all see. Had God given you charge over you, let you jack your foot against stone, he'll raise you up. It's written. Jesus said, I shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Deuteronomy 6, 13, Deuteronomy 6, 16 later on. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. He appealed to the pride. You can look, jump. God's going to catch you. Everybody's going to see, whoo, son of God. Soul realm. And then spirit. He made all the kings of the world appear before Jesus. Spiritual. All the kings appeared. Said, all these I'll give you if I bow down and worship me. Body, soul, and spirit. He said, thou shalt worship the only Lord, the Lord God only, and him only shall thou serve. Get thee behind me, Satan. You have to do the same thing, call chosen, and then you've got to be found faithful. If you're not faithful in that call, I didn't say perfect. We're striving. Pressing toward the mark for the prize of high calling of God in Christ Jesus. But you have to be faithful unto him, or he can never use you. 
He can't. He has to know that what he has entrusted you with, that you will be faithful and stand for him. No matter what, put a gun to your head. Hey, sorry, bud. I have to stand for my Lord. And if you don't pass those tests, you will not be used. For he that striveth for the mastery must be temperate in all things and first partaker of the fruits. You who want to be lead, you can never lead until you can be led. You can't be a leader unless you've learned how to be a servant. And he that's greatest will be servant of all. You'll never be used unless you put him, what he tells you to do, and even though the flesh raises up and you want to hit somebody, you want to, for less than that, I'd knock you on the ground when I was in the world. Turn the other cheek. Ask you for your coat, give him your cloak also because God's my avenger. Son, I'm going to be found faithful in him. You're not going to get my ministry. And I certainly don't want to obstruct you or become an offense to you and you getting yours. If you sow discord among the brethren, that's an abomination, seven things the Lord God hates. That one is the last one. He that soweth discord among the brethren, the Lord God hates. When you open your mouth, you condemn yourself in the flesh. If you strike out against the body of Christ in anything, you condemn yourself in the flesh. But if you see a fault, go to your brother and tell him. No, we talk behind the back here. We do it the African way. <laughs> we manipulate and lie to one another, make sure all of our lies line up. You'll never be blessed. Your nation will be cursed forever. Thank <laughs> you.